Alright, so no cleaning is done other than to quickly put away the science and the art of the end of um, our center time. In blue class last year, we started doing this thing where we were vacuuming early and yes, it just disturbed everything. And, yeah. Cannot do that. Okay. Alright, let me um, look at yellow class as well here. We have like three in blue class. When they go out to the playground, one of us stays back and starts cleaning early. That always helps get things done a little early. Okay. Yellow class. All right. When you are the snack parent, let's talk about that. When you're a snack parent, you are in charge of bringing everything that we need for the day's snack. If you need uh, plates or utensils, you need to bring them yourself because we don't have any space at school. We have very limited space space to store things and anytime we store much of anything it goes away. People borrow it because we share most of our space with the church and everything is common. <laughs> Everybody uses everything. So plan on bringing cups. We, we only drink water for our snack. Okay? We serve um, family style is what I like to do. So put a platter, a serving tray or two on each table because everybody sits down, including the helping parents and myself, to have snacks together so that we can model that we're tasting everything, that maybe we don't like it, maybe it's new, but we're going to give it a taste. Um, proper sitting, we have to help them you know, to sit on their little bottom and keep their feet under the table, try new foods, have nice conversations, eat nicely, use your good manners. Um, so we don't have snacks just because we're hungry, because we're not especially hungry for snack time. <laughs> but it's a very good learning. That's why we do snacks at school. So you need to bring everything. So snack guidelines, everybody has been bugging me to know what to bring for snack. All right, so a good snack consists of generally whole foods that are mostly plant-based because we do have children that are lactose intolerant. So that's those things to bear in mind. And they only serve water, as we said. Do you need to bring the water too? Yes. No. You do not. Sorry. We have we have our um, right, just cup. We have two water filters that we use that are in the refrigerator that you could fill the snack pitchers. And we have little snack pitchers because especially in blue class the kids are learning to pour their own water. Okay, all right, so some good things. There's the list. Apples, oranges, bananas, kiwis, grapes, strawberries, carrots and celery sticks, melons, pineapple chunks, cherry tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, blueberries. We didn't make the list, I don't know why. <laughs> but any of those things are great snacks. This is also a really good time to bring something from your um, cultural background. If there's something that your family especially likes to eat, you could bring that for snack, okay? That's a good thing to try out, new thing with that. I love it when parents will do that. <laughs> um, if you're going to have bananas, most children will not eat an entire banana, so cut them in half or maybe even thirds. Yes, Laura, you have a question over there. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. That was just um, baked apples is a really common snack. If like cinnamon is an issue or anything like that, is that? That variation. Okay, that would be fun. That'd be great. Sure. Yes, sounds good. Mm -hmm. It does. Okay. Yes. Do you have extra copies? Because I think the red class one may not have one of the Just bananas. because we don't. Oh, have that's because they don't. Oh, you don't bring snacks. So red class, the two-year-old class, the toddlers bring their own snack. and we just eliminate all the fussy eaters, and everybody just eats <laughs> what they want to eat. They generally share each other's snack. Last year. We had two little girls and they brought snack for each other always. And they yeah. were very sweet. Very, very cute. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I have two of these. I brought this for her. What did you bring me? They were really sweet. That's fun. So you can have cheese chunks sometimes, string cheese, popcorn is okay, uh, tortillas, stuff with tortillas a little bit. Occasionally you might want to do a peanut butter sandwich, you can cut them out in shapes. Um, sometimes you can have muffins, you don't want a lot of that. They usually tend to be really sugary and you don't need any more sugar. 
I had a little girl in here this afternoon, blue class. We read the story about ice cream. Should I share my ice cream? And she, from the minute she saw the book, she said, oh, ice cream is not healthy. We never eat ice cream at my house. <laughs> she complained through the whole story. I can't hear this story. I'm not looking at this story. It's like, okay, all right. <laughs> Close your eyes and turn around. <laughs> it was very, very sweet. Um, all right, there is a list of foods that are not allowed for snack, chips, cookies, cakes, cupcakes, pudding, prepackaged fruit snacks, soda, and punch are never allowed except for birthday. You could bring cupcakes, cookies, cake, a little bit of that. Just depends on how much sugar you want to fill the children up with. Remembering that their bodies are small. <laughs> And a little sugar goes a long way on tired little people. Okay? They are bouncing off the walls. All right, next thing is cleaning up. At the end of your class, you have to clean up the classroom. Uh, yellow and red class generally set up the classroom and don't have to do a lot of cleaning at the end of the day, but you do have to do some. How everybody needs to vacuum and sweep and take out the garbage, make sure the tables are wiped down, um, and the counter in the bathroom, okay? All right, of course we want to wipe off the easel, so the kids are going to be painting right on the surface. So the easiest thing to do is remember to pay attention, and this would be parent number three's job, to use the sponge and the squeegee and keep this cleaned off as the children finish painting. So at the end of the day, you don't have lots of dry hot paint. And you can see, it's got a lot of dry on paint all over us. <laughs> That's one of our favorite places. So generally, you're going to make sure that all of the dishes and the plate food are put back. And if the dress up clothes are hung up on the hooks and the books are back on the shelves. <coughs> and everything is like you would like it to be when your child comes into the classroom. Okay? All right. Um, so clean off the easels, take out the garbage, and we said that. Um, spray down the placemats a little bit, a bleach goes a long way, wipe them down <coughs> with paper towels and put them back where they go. I will show you your class. Um, yeah. Each class has its own little room that holds their placemats and their uh, name cards and their um, name. What do you call yeah. that? <laughs> name tags, thank you. <laughs> It's after your bedtime. Okay. Yes. Almost. But yes. Cool. Just about. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yellow class on Fridays, you get to do the fun stuff. We have to break down the classroom because we share it with the church nursery. So that means that we the cupboards turn into each other. We cover the green shelves with the drapes that are down there. <coughs> We turn this against the wall. Um, so we make sure the easels are out of the way. We have the only handicap accessible bathroom in the building. So to be ready for church on Sunday, we need to make sure that they have a clear shot to the bathroom in there. All right. Um, on regular on Mondays and Wednesdays. You do not have to mop or do the Thursday. You don't have to mop at the end of class. Blue class will do the mopping. Okay, at the end of the day. So sweep, vacuum, mop in blue class. Sweep up in yellow and red class. Okay. On Fridays, yellow class does have to mop. Okay. And then because you've got to break down on Friday, you get to set up again on Monday. Doesn't take very long at all. It used, to, it used to be quite the task to set them, but now it's very quick. So come a little earlier, make sure you're here by 10 after 9 and not really late so that you can help us get them back in shape. All right, okay, questions, did I cover that well enough for each class? Okay, all right, so something we all do is star of the week. Did everybody get signed up for star of the week? Did I ask that already? <laughs> yes, I think I did. All right. So there's the start of the week. Uh, so generally, make a poster, 
that tells them something about your child, let your child help put on stickers or color on it or whatever to make it really cute and put it up there. We have a Star of the Week committee chairperson that will remind you a week before that your turn is coming for your child to be Star of the Week. Okay? All right. So what class is this? This is yellow class. All right. Show and tell. Red class does not do show and tell. They don't do show and tell very well at all. We'll see how they do by about February or March, and we might, but generally <coughs> not good. They don't get anything out of it. But um, the other two classes will have show and tell. So um, for yellow and blue class, put something in your car because there's going to be a day where you're going to forget to bring something. Right. And you don't want to have <laughs> that kid. Yes. <laughs> All right, so yellow class, you are your child will have show and tell on the day that you classroom help. Okay, no matter whether you are a parent one, two, or three, your child will have show and tell. So starting tomorrow morning, the helping parents will, their children will have show and tell during one of our circle times. Please bring one something. It can be anything that they want to Still show. Still Thursdays for, you, for blue? Huh? Still Thursdays for yes. blue? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, try to limit it to one thing for your child because we're not great listeners, especially at the beginning of the year. <laughs> All right. And uh, have a chance to come stand next to me and show what they brought and tell a little bit about it and then put it back in their backpack and away we go. Um, in blue class, it's Thursdays. Every Thursday, everybody can bring show and tell that day. Okay, and like Mr. Mike was saying, make sure you have something that you keep in the car for show and tell because your child really gets irritated with you if they have to show your keys for show and tell. <laughs> Doesn't work. Or your telephone. If they don't like it, trust me. Mom. Or if you're not here, then they've got nothing. Yes. <laughs> right, yes, in the other class, yes. Yes, yes. All right, field trips. Blue class takes field trips monthly, pretty much. Yellow class, not very often. Red class, even less. <laughs> okay, so you can read about that. Field trips are for the children enrolled in the class, older and younger siblings, unless they are also enrolled as infants, really are not allowed to come on our field trips. And to eliminate all kinds of insurance, um, we ask or having to take care of everybody, gather your insurance information, copies of your license, and all this stuff, and making sure that we put car seats in, they're installed correctly, and that we have the right number of parents per car for children. If you want your child to go on the field trip, you bring them, you stay with them during the field trip. Okay, our field trips are lots of fun. Right, I'm currently trying to work with the current apple orchard to get yellow class and blue class during their class times to take a tour of the orchard. They do a really cute job. You get to pick apples and it's very fun. They haven't gotten back to me, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I want to go within the next couple of weeks to the apple orchard. Okay, so you will know about um, upcoming field trips. It will be posted on your um, class helper schedule on your calendar. Okay, and it will also be talked about in the uh, newsletter 